Hi everybody, Tara here from Boys and Girls Clubs of Western Pennsylvania. Um, Boys and Girls Clubs of America virtual club as well. Um, I'm here to show you um, a fun lesson in the area, my, my series called Children's Imaginarium um, Sculpture Series slash Food Art. Okay, so this is another food art one. It's very, very, very fun. This is an old traditional um, item, food item that you, that people used to always make for weddings. These are called wedding mints. Um, but I always look at something like that and decide that I can use it for other things in other ways. So you'll have fun with this. It's a basic ingredients. All you're gonna need is one eight ounce block sorry one eight ounce block of philadelphia cream cheese or another cream cheese but it has to be a pretty like a whole milk cream cheese you don't want to do any of those um lightweight artificial ones okay um food color of your choice i'm using green today you'll see why i'm using peppermint extract you can use peppermint oils you can go fancy and use doTERRA essential oils as well but you have to play around with the um, intensity of that flavor. You don't want to be too strong, but you also don't want to be too light. So this is the easiest one for me. Um, we will be using a bowl, a mixer, and this is the package that I wanted to show you empty, the confectioner sugar or powdered sugar, okay, a tool, a full two pound bag of sugar, okay? Now I used, I went ahead to save us a little time so you wouldn't have to sit there and watch me mix. Um, but I went ahead and mixed up um, with my hand mixer, those items that I just showed you, about four or five drops of the mint extract, peppermint extract, about 10 drops of the food coloring, one eight ounce cream cheese, and one two pound bag of powdered sugar. I mixed it up and this took probably about seven minutes or so. So what happened was you go in with your hand blender, this is a tip, when you go in with your hand blender in the powdered sugar, you do not wanna just put it up here on the edge, okay? Remember that cream cheese block is sitting at the bottom you don't want this to go in and you don't want to hit full tilt. You don't want to go like to the highest level of speed on your blender. Show what speed. Okay, so this is the speed here that I use. I one, see gentle. two. Sometimes I go to three on this one, but that's it. One, two, and three. And I go deep into my bowl as I'm moving it around. If you just skim the surface, What's going to happen is the powdered sugar is going to go flying all <laughs> over the kitchen and all over you. You got to, you must put the beaters all the way down into the mixture. And then you also, while you're working, I'm right-handed. You can, can you show them? Um, no, I already no. have this oh, mix. Okay. So, so that, that was the downfall <clears throat> of saving time. Is that I can't really show you because I don't want to take that extra time. Just know, just n believe me when I say this. Deep into the bowl with the mixer. How fast does that mixer go? And this this goes all the way up to level ten. Ooh, you only want to go to level one. Can we see level ten? Oh no, because all these little things will go all over the place. <laughs> okay. Yeah, all the little particles on there will go. Level ten is fast. You don't need to go do that. So now, so when you mix it, it turns to it looks like sand, and then it turns to pebbly. When it starts looking like little tiny pebbles, that's Cottage when you just, cheese. Yeah, a little tiny cottage cheese pebbles. That's when you stop. You can see how this pebbly. So then you use your hands and you go in and mix it. And then that pulls it all together. And the neat thing about powdered sugar is it really is absorbent of any liquid. So that little eight ounce block of cream cheese with your drops of liquid actually is enough to saturate all that sugar. And it'll come together. So this is all come together. And especially if you let it sit for a couple minutes like I did while I was talking to you. It's all nice and coming together. It's good. It's really in candy form now. It feels like Play-Doh, like children's Play-Doh. That's what you're going for, okay? Now this amount of candy stuff is gonna make quite a bit. 
I'll show you that now. So you're gonna take these little silicone molds that I bought just today because up until today, and I've been doing this for a long time, I just made my own shapes. Like this? Which is so fun. Let me show you an example. I make my purple cinnamon, my pink cinnamon ones. Beautiful. And I just make little cinnamon balls and they're coated in granulated sugar. You can make these into any shape that you want. If you want to hand sculpt them, you can, but you'll see with this consistency, it's a little difficult to do detailed sculpting. You're going to want to stick to some basic shapes. So let me show you how this works. All right. Now you're going to take one of these silicone molds and this is old fashioned. You see these at the weddings and you used to, I used to see mint ones in the shape of leaves a lot and little cinnamon ones in the shape of um, roses. We're switching it up a little bit. So you're gonna take some granulated sugar and you just wanna coat, put some granulated sugar and coat these a, a little bit. Just move it around with your finger. So what's the difference between granulated sugar and confectioner's sugar? Granulated sugar is, that, um, is actually, confectioner sugar, you can make your own powdered sugar. Guess what you do, guys? So people, I never realized this until I was older. All you do to make powdered sugar is you take this sugar and you put it into a super, super, I guess like high speed blender or mixer. Like food processor? Yeah, food processor, some type of me mechanical device with like a blade. And you actually, you know, break this sugar up. You like pulverize it. You pulverize it until it becomes confectionery sugar. In fact, powdered sugar is nothing more than regular sugar that has been broken up into smaller particles. I thought it was some like crazy complicated, well it is in a way, but it's so not this that is, bad. Let me mm -hmm. have some granulated yeah. sugar. So this is, the yeah, there's a difference. So granulated sugar has granules like that size. Powdered sugar is like powder. It's like- Flour almost. It's like, yeah, like powder, yeah. So anyways, I just dusted some of this granulated sugar into my roses. And I think I'll go ahead and dust one of these bigger flowers too. I also got some spring, like they look like, um, I don't know, little fun spring flowers. So you take these out and you drop out the sugar after you get a good amount in there, but you don't want too much, you just want enough. Okay, and then what you're going to do is, let's move this out of the way you're gonna take a little bit of your candy, cream cheese candy is another word for this. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna press it in, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and press this in. Hopefully this is gonna be beautiful. This is the first time I've ever used these type of molds. I can't even remember what type of molds, what the molds used to look like when I was a kid. Metal, I bet. I'm not even sure. I know that the, I didn't ever make these when I was a kid. It was always like the grandmothers or the older people that made these. So once you get them in, you let them sit there for a second and let's see if it pops out. Then these beautiful silicone molds. I know that silicone wasn't a thing back then. Oh my goodness, it's so pretty. Okay, there's the rose. Oh the, wow, yeah. Uh -huh. And what I'm gonna do wait, wait, is, hold still. Um, Thank you. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna still dust it with just a little bit more sugar. I don't really, maybe the idea is not to put the sugar into the things because I think it's better whenever I put it on myself. I don't know, Mix, mixed feelings on that. You put it down or? Mm -hmm. I, I wanna put it down so I can get this other one. I'm gonna put this in the thing so right now. get a good shot of that. Okay, sure. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Now let's take this other one out of the flower. Oh okay. yeah, this one's deeper. Very cool. This is a little tricky getting them out. You have to sort of be very gentle. Oh, I like that. This is the flower. Oh wow, uh -huh. that is more detailed than the rose. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm gonna just dust this a little bit. Some sugar. I don't know about this sugar dusting. We'll, we'll work on that. But anyways, the sugar, I think, takes away from the detail 
of the work. So it might be cool. Oh yeah, yeah. the edges. Yeah. So what all I also think would be neat is this, if you take some of this stuff, the candy mixture, you just roll it into a little ball like I did before. Check this out, guys. You can sculpture it with your own hands. And here we go, we can make some little uh, leaf, our, our own kind of leaf, it's beautiful. Just make random shapes. And again, just put some granulated sugar on these basic shapes all over and that will be nice. What happens is this, after I've filled this container up and I usually put, well, I usually put it on a tray actually and let it harden up in the refrigerator. And then I put it into my storage container. My storage container of choice is just a little Pyrex with my shapes and different le levels of um, layers of wax paper in between. And that work, seems to work out very nicely. Um, so there Pyrex you, is a brand name for yeah, glass, uh, glass cooking dish? Glass cooking dish. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so there you go, folks. A very easy project with a very few ingredients. And it allows you to be inspired. Um, remember, this is um, Children's Imaginarium. So even if you're an adult, you can think like a kid and you can use your imagination. Um, and this is a recipe from a long time ago. So this is something that you can work with now in 2022. It has never changed. So that's really the fun part of it. So if you don't have the blender, can you just... Yeah, you use can just use your hands. hands? If yeah. you don't have the blender, you can Make just, sure your hands are clean yes. and do it with your Make hands. Make sure your hands are clean and do it with your hands. Also, just quick industry note, when you're working candy makers, which is a lively profession, I would just love to become a chocolatier or a candy maker. When you work in a factory setting or in a bigger candy making setting, you would wear like hair nets. They have men wear beard coverings. You wear gloves all the time. I'm at home, so I'm not wearing gloves. But if I was in a professional setting and making these things for the public, I would be wearing gloves. Okay, just, just so you know. Thank you very much for listening. We're going to go on to our next video. Have a great day.